Here is your petition. Revised to strictly adhere to the context and content you provided. Without additional interpretations or opinions. United States District Court District of New Hampshire. Your name. Petitioner. And those similarly situated. Et al. V. United States of America. Et al. Defendants. Petition for redress. Compensation. And reparations. Table of contents. 1. Introduction. 2. Background. 3. Jurisdiction. 4. Jurisdictional challenge. 5. Constitutional challenge. 6. Violation of secured rights. 7. Statement of claim. 8. Relief sought. 9. Table of authorities. Table of authorities. 1. Maxims of law. O oh, equity regards as done that which ought to be done. O oh, the law does not require the impossible. O oh, he who seeks equity must do equity. O oh, rights never die. O oh, what is done in fraud is regarded as not done at all. 2. Statutes at large. O oh, Civil Rights Act of 1866. 14 Stat. 27 to 30. O oh, 13th Amendment. 13 Stat. 774. O 14th Amendment. 14 Stat. 358. O Civil Rights Act of 1871. 17 Stat. 13. 3. Supreme Court Quotations. O the first clause of the 14th Amendment was primarily intended to confer citizenship on the Negro race, and secondly to give definitions of citizenship of the United States and citizenship of the states. And it recognizes the distinction between citizenship of a state and citizenship of the United States by those definitions. Oh, the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States are those which arise out of the nature and essential character of the national government, the provisions of its constitution, or its laws and treaties made in pursuance thereof. Oh, it is not necessary to inquire here into the full force of the clause forbidding a state to enforce any law which deprives a person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. For that phrase has been often the subject of judicial construction, and is, under no admissible view of it, applicable to the present case. Oh, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. 1. Introduction. 1. The plaintiff, on behalf of themselves and those similarly situated, petitions this court for redress, compensation, and reparations against the United States of America, et al for systemic violations of rights through the institution of slavery, the enforcement of Jim Crow laws, and related oppressive practices. 2. This petition is based on the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which recognizes no statute of limitations for claims related to the deprivation of rights under color and authority of law. 3. The plaintiff asserts that their ancestors were subjected to slavery and systemic discrimination that violated their inherent rights as state citizens, as guaranteed by natural law and the U.S. Constitution. 4. The plaintiff seeks accountability for the role of the United States government and several states in perpetuating these injustices and demands reparations for the resulting economic, social, and legal disadvantages inflicted on African Americans. 5. This petition lists all states that enacted and enforced Jim Crow laws, segregated public facilities, and participated in the systematic deprivation of rights of African Americans. 6. The plaintiff emphasizes the need for redress, not only for past wrongs but for the ongoing effects of these injustices on descendants of enslaved individuals and others similarly situated. 7. The relief sought includes monetary compensation, restoration of property, and legal protections for descendants of enslaved individuals, along with structural reforms to prevent future injustices. 2. Background. 1. 
the transatlantic slave trade, sanctioned and facilitated by the government of the United States and several state governments, forcibly brought millions of Africans to the Americas, where they were enslaved and exploited for economic gain. 2. The United States government and various state governments, including Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia, actively participated in and profited from the institution of slavery, enacting laws that treated African Americans as property and denied them basic human rights. 3. Following the Civil War, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery, but many states enacted Jim Crow laws, which enforced racial segregation and disenfranchised African Americans, effectively continuing their oppression. 4. The states that enforced both Jim Crow laws and segregation include Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. 5. The plaintiff asserts that these discriminatory practices were in violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and that the continued enforcement of these laws breached the constitutional protections guaranteed to all citizens. 6. The plaintiff asserts that the government of the United States was complicit in these violations as it failed to enforce the protections intended by the Civil Rights Act of 1866, allowing state governments to continue discriminatory practices. 7. The plaintiff seeks to rectify these historical injustices by holding the United States government and the involved states accountable for their actions and securing reparations for the descendants of those affected. 3. Jurisdiction. 1. This court has jurisdiction under the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which provides for the redress of grievances related to the deprivation of rights under color and authority of law. 2. The plaintiff asserts that the Civil Rights Act of 1866, enacted by a supermajority of Congress, remains fully applicable and provides the legal foundation for this petition. 3. The plaintiff further asserts that the government of the United States, acting as a commercial entity, is liable for the actions of its agents and officials who acted under the color and authority of law to deprive African Americans of their rights. 4. The involvement of the United States government and the several states in the institution of slavery. Enforcement of Jim Crow laws and other discriminatory practices makes them liable for the harms caused to African Americans and their descendants. 5. The plaintiff asserts that these actions violated the due process rights of enslaved individuals and their descendants, as the deprivation of rights was carried out without legal justification and in violation of constitutional principles. 6. The plaintiff emphasizes that the jurisdiction of this court extends to all claims arising from violations of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, regardless of when the violations occurred, as the Act recognizes no statute of limitations. 7. The plaintiff also contends that the relief sought is consistent with the principles of equity as it seeks to restore the rights and dignity of those who were unlawfully deprived of them. 4. Jurisdictional Challenge 1. The plaintiff challenges the application of the 14th Amendment in this matter, as the Supreme Court has held that the 14th Amendment was primarily intended to confer federal citizenship on the Negro race, distinguishing it from state citizenship. 2. The plaintiff contends that their rights derive from their status as state citizens, with rights inherently secured by the U.S. Constitution and the Civil Rights Act of 1866, rather than from the 14th Amendment. 3. The 9th and 10th Amendments reserve powers not delegated to the federal government to the states, 
and the people, affirming that the plaintiff's rights were not created by, and are not dependent on, the 14th Amendment. 4. The plaintiff asserts that the deprivation of rights under Jim Crow laws and other discriminatory practices violated their inherent rights as state citizens, which were protected by the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and other constitutional provisions. 5. The plaintiff contends that the United States government and the several states had no lawful authority to enact or enforce laws that deprived African Americans of their rights, as these rights were inherent and inalienable. 6. The plaintiff asserts that any laws or practices that sought to strip African Americans of their rights were unconstitutional and void from inception, as they violated the principles of due process and equal protection under the law. 7. The plaintiff seeks a declaration from this court affirming that the 14th Amendment does not apply to state citizens in the context of this petition and that the rights of African Americans were unlawfully deprived under the color of law. 5. Constitutional Challenge 1. The plaintiff asserts that the institution of slavery, as sanctioned by the government of the United States and several states, was a violation of the due process rights of enslaved individuals and their descendants. 2. The plaintiff contends that slavery, as practiced in the United States, was unconstitutional from its inception, as it violated the principles of natural law and the inherent rights of all human beings. 3. The plaintiff asserts that the enforcement of Jim Crow laws, which perpetuated the subjugation of African Americans after the abolition of slavery, was equally unconstitutional and in violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. 4. The plaintiff contends that these laws and practices were designed to strip African Americans of their constitutionally secured rights, including the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 5. The plaintiff asserts that the U.S. government and the involved states acted unlawfully in enacting and enforcing these laws, which violated the equal protection and due process clauses of the U.S. Constitution. 6. The plaintiff seeks a declaration from this court that the institution of slavery and the enforcement of Jim Crow laws were unconstitutional and that the government entities responsible are liable for the harms caused. 7. The plaintiff contends that the ongoing effects of these injustices, including systemic racism and economic disparities, continue to violate the rights of descendants of enslaved individuals, and seeks redress for these violations. 6. Violation of secured rights. 1. The plaintiff asserts that the United States government and the involved states violated the civil Rights Act of 1866 by depriving African Americans of their rights under color and authority of law. 2. The plaintiff's ancestors were subjected to slavery, segregation, disenfranchisement, and other forms of discrimination solely based on their race, in violation of their constitutionally secured rights. 3. The plaintiff contends that these violations were carried out under the authority of law making the United States government and associated entities liable for the harms caused. 4. The plaintiff asserts that the rights of African Americans, as state citizens, were not conferred by the 14th Amendment but were inherent and unlawfully infringed upon by subsequent laws and practices. 5. The plaintiff contends that the enforcement of Jim Crow laws which denied African Americans the right to vote, travel freely, and receive equal protection under the law, was a violation of the due process and equal protection clauses of the U.S. Constitution. 6. The plaintiff asserts that the ongoing effects of these violations, including generational economic disadvantages and systemic racism, continue to harm African Americans and their descendants. 7. The plaintiff seeks a declaration from this court affirming that the rights of African Americans, 
were unlawfully deprived under the color of law and that the United States government and the involved states are liable for the harms caused. 7. Statement of Claim. 1. The plaintiff asserts that the institution of slavery, as sanctioned by the government of the United States and several states, was a violation of the due process rights of enslaved individuals and their descendants. 2. The plaintiff contends that the enforcement of Jim Crow laws, which perpetuated the subjugation of African Americans after the abolition of slavery, was equally unconstitutional and in violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. 3. The plaintiff asserts that these laws and practices were designed to strip African Americans of their constitutionally secured rights, including the right to life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 4. The plaintiff contends that the U.S. government and the involved states acted unlawfully in enacting and enforcing these laws, which violated the equal protection and due process clauses of the U.S. Constitution. 5. The plaintiff seeks a declaration from this court that the institution of slavery and the Enforcement of Jim Crow laws were unconstitutional and that the government entities responsible are liable for the harms caused. 6. The plaintiff asserts that the ongoing effects of these injustices, including systemic racism and economic disparities, continue to violate the rights of descendants of enslaved individuals and seeks redress for these violations. 7. The plaintiff seeks monetary compensation, restoration of property, and legal protections for descendants of enslaved individuals, along with structural reforms to prevent future injustices. 8. Relief sought. 1. The plaintiff seeks monetary compensation in the form of $28 trillion in new currency. Designed similarly to cryptocurrency and backed by national assets such as land and infrastructure. 2. The plaintiff seeks the return of any land or property seized from descendants of enslaved individuals, with three times the value in landmass provided if direct restitution is not feasible. 3. The plaintiff seeks diplomatic immunity for descendants of enslaved individuals from statutes codes, and regulations, and recognition of their rights as state citizens with full ownership of property. 4. The plaintiff seeks the creation of a special passport for descendants of enslaved individuals, granting them diplomatic status and ensuring their rights are recognized internationally. 5. The plaintiff seeks a declaration from this court affirming that the institution of slavery in the Enforcement of Jim Crow laws were unconstitutional and that the government entities responsible are liable for the harms caused. 6. The plaintiff seeks a declaration that the 14th Amendment does not apply to state citizens in this context and that the rights of African Americans were unlawfully deprived under the color of law. 7. The plaintiff seeks an order requiring the United States government and the involved states to implement structural reforms to prevent future injustices, including the creation of educational and economic opportunities for descendants of enslaved individuals. This version adheres strictly to the context you provided without adding any extraneous interpretations or opinions. If you require further adjustments, Please let me know.